Okay, so what we're looking at, we've got a patient with a four degree, a two degree, and a six degree buckling of the spine. Now, multiple rotation malpositions. Now, when we take this and bend her off to the side, this is her bending off in this direction. We can see the vertebrae opening up correctly where they're narrow on the concavity, wide on the convexity, but these two are functioning different. They're opposite. Then bend the other way, and we can see clearly that these discs are functioning correctly and these two are not correct. And that not correct has to do with proprioception or the body's position in space. Now this is the side view of the neck and there's almost no curve with a tremendous amount of pressure at C1. So what we're gonna do is start off under abdominal suspension. Now, the way the body works is we don't have conscious control of these muscles. They increase in tone under nerve pressure. Now, right at the occiput area, she's got a, a significant increased tone on this left side. So I'm gonna apply a little bit of pressure here just for a few seconds. And then I check the leg length and it's called a cervical challenge. And that means that if I can change the tone of half of these muscles, that'll change the pelvic length, and then that'll change the, the leg length. And I'm going to try a slightly different angle. And to see if we get just as good a correction, and that was actually a little worse. So it's going to be more of a lateral deviation on that C1 that she has, and then that's much better. Now this is the interesting part because the adjustments are designed to change the brain's awareness of the body. Now, every muscle in the body, if you stretch it, it gets tighter. This one, you stretch, it loosens up. Because I'm not stretching the muscles, I'm changing the sensors in the area. And there's three sensors we're working with. The joint mechanoreceptors, the facet, which is in the facet joint, the intrinsic muscles and the ligaments even have proprioceptive sensors. Now when I bend her off to the side, the muscles on the inside portion should be relaxing and they are. I bend to the outside and they're increasing in tone and that doesn't make sense because we should be responding the same way. That's because the sensors aren't functioning correctly. So I'm gonna pass a 10 cycle a second vibration on the concave portion just for a few seconds. And what that does, that relaxes the ligaments and allows me to change the tone of those muscles. Now that she is bending correctly, where we're bending her off to side and the muscles on the inside portion are relaxing, then we can cause a deep inflammatory response to generate the tissue back. Now, since she has one disc here and one disc here that's not functioning correctly, you're gonna see we're gonna do the same force loading in the side posture and supine position. Now, she's also posterior on the right, and this is a meningeal tension release. And after that, typically the response is, oh, yeah, that felt really good. I know it did, the side up. De lado derecho abajo. Now this is super important that there's no torquing of the spine. And I'm gonna explain why. <laughs> because the more you twist, the more you stimulate the joint mechanoreceptors, the intrinsic muscles, everything, you stimulate the proprioceptive sensors. Now this is that anterior C1 challenge. And we know it's slightly more lateral and just very, very gentle. Now this, you don't wanna twist or turn the body. The more you do that, you stimulate the paravertebrals to increase in tone. So it's in a more neutral position and it's a very, very gentle pressure until, beautiful, until you get a change in tone of the muscles. And we're gonna do the same force loading, which is in the prone side posture and supine position. That way we change proprioception the best. Boca Riva. God, it's almost like you've done this before. Now I'm supporting the occiput on the left and applying a little bit of pressure. Since everything we're doing is changing the brain's awareness of the body, the plates of the skull, if they're misaligned, then the brain can't get the right nutrients. And if there's loss of curve in the neck, that also means 
that the cerebral spinal fluid that's produced in the brain can't drain. Now, you're going to see there's almost no rotation. I'm maintaining pressure along the joint line of the facet and then a slight impulse along the plane line. And this is the segment right below. And you'll see very, very little, little movement. Now, after an adjustment like that, you have to warn her that she's quite a bit taller. I know, <laughs> huge, huge. You'll be tipping the scales at about five feet. Now, since we have that left disc that was also the left side up and also the left side prone, there's gonna be a left lateral AP lumbar and you'll see very, very gentle impulse. Then we say, rise, my dear. You're ready for the world.